the the reality of it was my sin that held mm-hmm. him there. It's not like my sin was like the force and it was like holding him to the cross and he was fighting it. No, it was like his commitment to atone for yes. my sin is what held him there. He could have yeah. backed out, but Christ was so faithful to yeah. his mission that he that he stayed there until all until it was yeah. finished. Welcome back to another episode of Empire Show, the podcast where we talk all things church music. I'm Cara Peregrino. And I'm Monet Funga. And today we are starting off a short series leading up to Easter. We will take a look at some hymns reflecting on the crucifixion of our Lord in anticipation of Good Friday. A little old, a little new, and one surprising hymn that you've likely never heard, brought to you by one of the most famous Reformed Baptist churches in the world. Hmm. But first, if you're watching us on YouTube and you like what you hear today, please like this video. It really helps us. Um, also, don't forget to head over to himpartial.com where you can sign up for our free weekly newsletter or even better, support us on ko-fi.com forward slash himpartial. Newsletter subscribers get first access to all of our bonus content. And this week, we are looking at some honorable mentions for Good Friday. Um, that you'll definitely want to add to your hymn list for your worship service this year. But if you're not a subscriber, then you will be missing out. So head over to hymnpartial.com and sign up today. That's right. Subscribers are going to get like a bunch of goodies this week because I couldn't fit everything I wanted to talk about and in this episode. next week, by the way. And so if week. you're listening to this and you haven't signed up, you yes. still have time before next week. Yes. Go and do it. Yes. I mean, we really pumped. The thing is, like, we give you guys so much stuff for free. Um, everything. Yeah, pretty much everything for free. We still want you to subscribe to Kofi.com slash impartial and help us pay the bills. But obviously this this podcast is not about making money, though there is obviously a real life cost to things. Um, but we do want to give you some incentive to being on that subscriber list because we don't know. These algorithms are, you know, they change every day. One day we might be at the top of your search and then... You might be like, what happened to him partial? I haven't seen a video from them in ages. To be honest, all it takes is us saying one unwoke thing. Yeah. And I think we might have already crossed that line. We said more than one unwoke (laughs) thing. (laughs) So it's really best to sign up to our subscriber list so that you don't miss our episodes because it's so easy for social media to just completely throttle our posts all the Mm -hmm. way down. So... And it's for your d- own good. Yeah. <laughs> and we do this for you. We do this content for you. We 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 get great feedback from those of you who are uh, regular to reach out to us via email or on social media. So um, sign up. Just an extended plug for that. So like I said in the intro, we want to do we wanted to do a short series around Easter. We've said this probably before on the show, but definitely offline that Easter should be a bigger a bigger yeah. event than Christmas, but you guys know how we go all out on Christmas. So maybe we're condemned by our own words <laughs> and how we treat Easter. So we have just a, a mini series leading up to Easter. We'll have this week's episode is about crucifixion hymns or Good Friday hymns. Next week's episode will be on resurrection hymns or Easter hymns. Um, And then we'll have a little fun off the record, which hopefully you guys will all tune into just the day after Easter. Yep. So um, we want to do the series because we want to help you, our listeners, think through some hymns that specifically reflect on how our Savior died and why. And I think Good Friday is such a wonderful kind of like important part of the Christian calendar because the cross is really... um, not what someone would consider a happy event, Mm. you know, like objectively it is good because we understand why God did it. But if you're like, why are you guys celebrating the day that this, this guy like died, you know, you might, that might need some explaining. Mm -hmm. So some of you listening might be new to Christianity or maybe your particular tradition doesn't really do anything for Good Friday. So We went to our good friend's Wikipedia (laughs) to get a definition of what Good Friday Friday is. Um, And this is what they say. Good Friday is a Christian holiday commemorating the crucifixion of Jesus and his death at Calvary. It is observed during Holy Week, which starts on Palm Sunday and goes all the way through to Easter. Um, 
it's also known as Holy Friday, Great Friday, hmm. Great and Holy Friday, in case you didn't have enough great, adjectives in there. The great Good Holy Friday. Yes. <laughs> and, and also as Holy and Great Friday. And Black Friday? Have you ever heard it as Black Friday? I've heard of Black Friday, but not in this context. Uh, that, but that's what I'm saying. I've heard of Black Friday like Black as in, is in sales. Like dark or... I don't know. I've never heard it called anything other than Good Friday. Me either, but like my like this might be a tradition thing, right? Mm. Like maybe depending on what tradition of Christianity like I would you call it Black Saturday or something because that was the day he was dead, and that must be pretty miserable. Yeah, mind you, seeing him die, dead would be miserable as well. I don't. know. It was all miserable until Sunday, but, but that's next week's episode. It is. That is. So the songs we'll look at today are going to be focused on only Black Friday. When Christ was nailed to a tree for me and you, if you're a Christian and you're listening. So before we dive in, Cara, do you have any predictions of the hymns I'm going to bring up today? I don't know, but there's like 8 million of them that'll be really annoyed if you don't (laughs) use because Uh. I specifically didn't use them in next week's episode because so many resurrection hymns are also crucifixion hymns. They are. So I really like Man of Sorrows. So I'm kind of mm. hoping that's in there. Um, Who knows? I really like there's a fountain filled with blood as well. So I'm like, I wouldn't mind if that was in there. When I survey the wondrous cross is a good choice, but maybe it's too obvious. Who knows? You know. So why don't you oh, tell Oh, I us? know. I know. <laughs> I know. So we're only going to talk about five hymns in this episode. So that's why I said I did. I did. I couldn't squeeze enough in here. And mm-hmm. what we kind of agreed beforehand is that we do like two old hymns and two new hymns and then like a really unknown hymn just to like kind of bless you guys and ourselves with something that's not always used. It's a good mix. It's a good mix. So I'm kind of going to just go back and forth. Old hymn, new hymn, old hymn, new hymn, and then the unknown hymn. Okay. So for the first old hymn, we're turning to our boy, Isaac Watts. Where else would you go? (laughs) With, you might be surprised by this, the hymn, Alas, and Did My Savior Bleed. Oh, now, if you want to learn about this hymn more in depth, we did a fantastic episode. I say we did a fantastic episode. Our guests did a fantastic episode. Last year, we had um, the chap who runs Hymnology Archive Mm -hmm. on to do an episode, and he chose this hymn for Easter, and it was a really, really good episode. And Mm -hmm. then in the bonus clip that we did, we compared, like, which is the better Isaac Watts episode, When I Survey, or... And that's actually a good plug. We will link that in the description so that we'll you guys can, can watch that. Yeah, so, it was a really good episode. Yeah, this is a lovely hymn. Um, it reflects on what Christ did for us on Calvary's tree. I wanted to pick just a verse to focus on uh, for each of the songs, but for some of them I cheated and there's the whole song written there. So uh, yeah, Cara, do you mind reading the whole hymn just so people could, who aren't familiar with it can hear how wonderful these lyrics are? With pleasure. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for sinners such as I? Was it for crimes that I have done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. Well might the sun in darkness hide and shut its glories in, when God the mighty Maker died for his own creature's sin. Thus might I hide my blushing face while his dear cross appears, Dissolve my heart in thankfulness and melt my eyes to tears. But drops of tears can ne'er repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. I love it. Coming back to it a year later, I still love it. It's so good. Mm. It's so good. I think like depending on your, like the culture of your church, you may or may not sing this hymn every Easter. I don't think I've ever sung it at Easter and maybe only a handful of times at other parts of the year. Like, depend, and what, it wasn't necessarily from our church. We'd be, like, visiting a church and they'd sing this hymn. But it's a beautiful hymn. And, oh, my goodness, Isaac Watts. Like, you're not surprised. But sometimes he still surprises you. You know, you're mm-hmm. like, whoa. So just a beautiful hymn. And we'll have in our newsletter just some links to some good versions of these hymns, which is another good reason why you should sign up for our newsletter. Um, sorry, just a a multiple, multiple plugs there. (laughs) So this hymn draws from Mark 15, uh, some of its imagery from Mark 15, uh, which focuses on the death of Jesus, obviously. Um, so starting in verse 33, 
And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, our Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? <clears throat> so the hymn's talking about the darkness and like it's getting that from that that passage. So for our second, wait, any more notes on that one before I move on? Because <laughs> no, we got I five. Mean, we have we have a whole episode on that yes. one. So it is a fantastic hymn, and my only notes are go and listen to that episode yeah. because it's a great hymn, and it's then go sing it in church. Yep, there's a lot of overlap mm. between the hymns on this list and things we talked about before. Maybe not not strictly, but maybe. Okay. Um, our second hymn, we move from the old to the new. So the old, that's Isaac Watts era. We're moving to modern times mm -hmm. to one of my favorite hymns, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Oh, I like that one. It's a good one. Um, this modern hymn was written by Stuart Townen. I often hear this song being played in the background when churches are taking communion. Uh, and it's a lovely hymn for that reason. It, it really draws you into reflecting on what Christ has done. Um, and how the cross is an extension of God the Father's deep love for us. So the verse that always gets me, oh, all of the verses get me actually, but the one that really, really gets me because it's so condemning and so beautiful is the second verse. Um, Behold the man upon a cro the cross. Mm -hmm. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I love that verse. Because, yeah, so often we think of the crucifixion and we're like, oh, those terrible people that did that. Mm -mm. But I love that this song is like, I know what I am. And I know that if I'd been there, I would have done the same. Mm -hmm. I really like that about it. Mm -hmm. And the the reality of it was my sin that held mm -hmm. him there it's not like my sin was like the force and it was like holding him to the cross and he was fighting it no it was like his commitment to atone for yes. my sin is what held him there he could have yeah. backed out but christ was so faithful to yeah. his mission that he that he stayed there until all until it was yeah. finished yeah. yeah so it's a beautiful beautiful hymn Stuart Townen, if you're listening to this, we really want you on our show. <laughs> we really, really, really want you on your show. Um, so somebody He's make it happen. Some really great hymns. Yes, I mean this yeah. is top tier. Mm. So for our third hymn, we go back to the old. So we went old, new, old now, mm -hmm. and this is totally and utterly a cheat. But I think if I didn't mention this song based on Cara, <laughs> um, that I would definitely get mean comments. Uh, either offline or online but this song is also by Isaac Watts and it is When I Survey the Wonders Cross <laughs> just a note she wouldn't get mean comments from me she might get mean comments from some of you guys I'm sure there will be plenty that you're like you left this out yes but um, that's why you just signed up for bonus content yes anyway yeah When I Survey the Wonders Cross is we also have an episode on that yes right. we do and so, yeah I mean yeah. it's really a beautiful and Cara did an excellent job of breaking down this hymn. Do so you know who also did a great job last week, a few weeks ago, we had Joe Barnard on the show talking mm -hmm. about a book that he's written called Hymn Workouts. Mm -hmm. And in, I think it was the bonus content, he talked about, he broke down the verse, mm -hmm. uh, one of the verses from uh, when I surveyed the wondrous cross and just explained it in more depth. And it was so good. It really was. That should be public now. So you can go find it. Bonus content. Bonus content. What, but what? you would have seen that a lot sooner if you'd sign up. <laughs> but like I said, we have an entire episode on this. Joe broke it down in the bonus. We also talked uh, about it last year mm. with um, the guy from him archive. And really, it's a self-explanatory hymn. I feel like it's used so often and maybe sounds a bit cliche, but it's just that good. That's how good it is. It's that good. And yeah. you could read every verse of this hymn and be like, wow, 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 amazing. But just to hit the hit a different point from the other hymns that I've mentioned, I'll read the verse that says, See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? 
just a beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, beautiful. he makes something that was ugly and brutal and awful, and he pulls out the beauty in it mm-hmm. so well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I love the imagery of sorrow and love flow mingled down. Mm. He's literally talking about our Savior's blood, mm. you know, and that is like, what? You know, what a what an image, you know, but Isaac Watts, he's he's the best. What can I say? Um, yeah. Any other thoughts on that before we go to I our next one? I have so time? many thoughts on that hymn <laughs> and like how good it is yes. and the imagery in it and the language yes. in it and the use of all the words and everything and <laughs> which tune you should use and how wonderful it is but yes nothing that i've not already said i don't think you can say it again it's fine i just really like it it's a great one it's a great hymn and you could at me about how cliche it is that it's on my list and that i have two isaac watts hymns on my hit list cliche for yeah. a reason like mm-hmm. this is sung to death because it's a good song mm-hmm. it is and i avoided putting several of my other favorites on here because I was like, I can't put those instead of this hymn. So I felt like the two old hymns that did such justice were both Isaac, Watt, Isaac Watts hymns. So he just yeah. knows how to deal with the cross. I'm not going to lie. Between him and Charles Wesley, it's really hard for the other hymn writers to, yeah, get, to get in. <laughs> I was really struggling with next week's episode on the resurrection. I was yeah. like, Wesley, Wesley, Wesley. He yeah. writes all the great resurrection <laughs> hymns. And I was like... No, you got to include someone else. Got to include someone else. <laughs> so I didn't do that. I, I resisted. So next, for our next modern hymn, we turn to Steve and Vicki Cook, which we have talked about on this show before. But mm-hmm. this is a different hymn we haven't talked about before. And it's a song called I Come by the Blood. I love this song as well. It is a very beautiful song. Now, this is a small, like kind of, well, it's not small, but I really love this song because of the key. Like, I love to sing this song. It's such a really like pleasing key. I don't know what key it is. Somebody look it up and tell me in the comments, but I just love the way it sounds like it's a great melody. It's composed really well. There's something about the rhythm as well. Just the whole way the tune is written, it works fantastically. Yeah. So, um, the main thrust of this hymn in reference to Good Friday is the chorus. Oh no, chorus triggered. (laughs) So I'm going to have Cara, who loves choruses, read that for us. So I will try and read it, but it's really hard not to be like, I come by the blood. (laughs) So good. Okay, I'll try and read it in a normal voice. Yeah. Okay. I come by the blood. I come by the cross where your mercy flows from hands pierced for me. For I dare not stand on my righteousness. My every hope rests on what Christ has done. And I come by the blood. I love it. Yep. I love as well. Like you've got the, uh, the mercy flowing hands pierced for me. And it's like, I dare not stand on my righteousness. Mm -hmm. Like mine's not good enough. I wouldn't even chance it. My every hope rests on what Christ has done. Yeah. I really, really like those words. That's a, that's an excellent reflection too, because so much of modern Christianity, at least in the last like few decades, has been like, I'm gonna give you everything, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm so like I'm so in awe of you or whatever. It's kind of like a little bit boastful, and it's like, no, I I ain't nothing. Like, I well, dare not even it's try to. Not even like I cannot stand on yeah. my righteousness. It's yeah. like I. Dare not. Yeah. So you know you can't stand in your righteousness yeah. and you still try it anyway. Yeah, you still try. <laughs> so they're like... I, We're I all don't guilty even, of it, by the yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I say that because speaking of myself first, like yeah. that's the temptation. Mm-hmm. And so it's not even I cannot. It's like I dare not. Yeah. It's a solid, solid hymn. I do like the writings of Steve and Vicki Cook. They know, they know what's up. So there's my two old, there's my two new... And now a relatively unknown one. I say relatively because depending on your circles, you might be like, oh, I know this hymn. <laughs> but I think most of our listeners would never have heard this hymn before. Um, this one was actually discovered via the Met Tab or the Metropolitan Tabernacle, which for those of you who wouldn't know about this church, it's a big Reformed Baptist church down in England where a small time preacher named Charles Spurgeon used to preach. <laughs> So, um, but this, this hymn didn't necessarily come out of his era, but, um, or the arrangement, I should say, um, it just calculating. No, it's pre-Spurgeon. 
Pre-Spurgeon. I thought it was uh, post-Spurgeon. Spurgeon's Victorian. Victorian's 1800s. Wesley was the 18th century, which is the 1700s. Not the writer. The the composer. Okay. So think, this is why this is. Uh, okay. So I think this is an old hymn that has a new tune. Well, Wesley translate it in this. Um, so give me a okay, second. I'll give you, sorry. So give me I'm a second. I'm jumping ahead. Yeah, that's okay. I'm glad that you know things. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I've not seen this arrangement from any other church except for the Met Tab, but the arrangement was, or the it, it was composed by a guy named Christopher Laws. Um, and as far as I know, this was post, this was like in recent years, like that this person okay. did this com- composition. Maybe I should check that. Now I'm feeling insecure. But yes, this was originally written by Paul Gerhardt in the 17th century and was later picked up by John Wesley in the 18th century. That's why I jumped the gun, because I was like, it's Paul Gerhardt. And then uh, I remembered we actually did an episode on him as well. Yes, yes. On a hymn called Give to the Wind Thy Fears, I think. Commit Thou All Thy Griefs. Oh, yes, 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 Commit yes, Commit Thou yes, All yes, Thy yes, Griefs. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. And I remember that John Wesley had been someone who translated his hymns. Yeah. And so I made the connection yes. too fast. Yes. So it's an old hymn with a new tune. I'm 72% sure about that. Now I feel a little awkward. No, but maybe I, I, it's true. I believe you because you know more than I do. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but Christopher Laws, if you're out there, if this person's still alive, I have no idea. Um, this is This is hands down one of my husband's favorite arrangements of any him he thinks it's just the most beautiful sounding and every recording of it that i've seen has said like by the metro ta- metropolitan tabernacle metropolitan tabernacle so yes paul gerhardt translated by john wesley but this arrangement that we yeah brought back into use by the met tab and it's really really beautiful um i don't think if you've heard this hymn before like let us know in the comments um because I hadn't, I hadn't until maybe a year before last. And it was really through um, a guy who we tried to get on the show, but he's not really keen on being on camera. But Martin DeGroot, he has a YouTube channel, which is really a, was a fantastic tool for us during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, in that he, he has hymns that have been recorded at various churches all over the world. And he has the lyrics on the screen so that you can sing along with it. They're actually really good if you're not familiar with hymns. And if you prefer like congregational singing to just having a main singer and some backing music, Mm -hmm. then they're actually really great for singing along. Oh, yeah. 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 It's it's a really useful source. And we'll definitely have a link to this hymn in there. But um, before we end it out, Cara, do you mind reading this hymn for us in its entirety? Of course. (laughs) Extended on a cursed tree, besmeared with dust and sweat and blood, see there the King of glory, see, sinks and expires the Son of God. Who, who, my Saviour, this has done? Who would thy sacred body wound? No guilt thy spotless heart has known, no guile has in thy lips been found. I, I alone have done the deed, tis I thy sacred flesh have torn. My sins have caused thee, Lord, to bleed pointed the nail and fixed the thorn. Too much to thee I cannot give, too much I cannot do for thee. Let all thy love and all thy grief graven on my heart forever be. Still let thy tears, thy groans, thy sighs, o'erflow my eyes and move my breast, till loosened from this flesh and earth I rise and ever in thy presence rest. It's a great hymn. It really touches on almost all the things that we talked about Mm -hmm. with the other hymns. So if you only have room for one extra song in your Good Friday celebration, squeeze this one in because it really it really covers the bases. Um, It it deals with the real brutality of the cross, but also your responsibility Mm -hmm. in it and the just the way that it moves you to worship God. Um, and the rest, I love that ever in thy presence rest. It is like such a juxtaposition. I really, really love good Friday. Um, I think it's a wonderful thing for churches to come around and to be thinking about the crucifixion of Jesus. We obviously do this regularly in communion regularly on Sundays, but to come, come together on a non Sunday 
and to think about this during Holy Week. I think it's really, really special. So we have lots more to talk about on the bonus episode. So yeah. if I didn't hit your favorite resurrection or crucifixion hymn here, maybe you should check also, out the bonus episode. if we haven't mentioned it, which we obviously haven't in this episode at all, um, you should sign up for our newsletter so yeah. you get the bonus content. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sign up for the newsletter. Do it, do it, do it. Well, thank you so much, Monet, for sharing these hymns. I'm really glad that they didn't cross over with next week's. (laughs) So stay tuned, because next week we are going to be talking about resurrection hymns. Um, We've got some good ones. So, yeah, we'll see you next week. Until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Bye. Bye.